Well, we're back after a big weekend in the thoroughbred industry at Churchill Downs. The 2024 Kentucky Derby is in the rear view as we take a look in a couple. Actually, next week. Are we already talking about the Preakness next week, guys? That's what it is. Comes we'll fast. Saturday. So, yes. Uh, we had the Oaks last week and the Derby, of course. So, we're going to get into that. And then we have two races that we're going to talk about here on today's show. We have the Grade 3 Peter Pan and also the Man of War. That is a Grade 2 race, actually, from uh, Aqueduct, also known as Belmont at the Big A. I uh, just don't. Uh, I mean. That's because the Belmont meet would usually be run now if they were at Belmont, but Belmont is closed for construction. And I'm assuming that's just all for advertising, because otherwise it's a silly thing to say. No, yes. the yes. meet ends, but it is silly. Yeah. But that's besides the point. All right. We're going to have uh, some comments we're going to go over, obviously. I know we had a lot of viewers uh, that uh, checked us out this past week, so uh, we'll, we'll get some questions and things of that nature. Uh, first off, though, um, first of all, how about just thank you for everybody that? Yeah, that? how about a thank you to everybody that listened? We had unbelievable numbers. So thank you, all you listeners. There you go. Thank you for thanking them. All right. Yeah, so yes, uh, appreciate everybody that tuned in, um, and uh, uh, we also gave those uh, bonus races over at Patreon. And uh, we're going to be sending out an email after uh, this show. So maybe by the time you see this, this uh, video, you're going to see the email that I'm going to present because we have a lot of things that we're thinking about as far as uh, marketing the show through YouTube uh, and uh, a few other options that uh, I've come to light. So uh, we really appreciate all of your comments and your feedback. So let us know what you think when we send out that email to all our Patreon members. All right. Let's uh, first of all... Um, start with some of these uh, questions or comments. I, I want to start, we, we finally had one on Twitter. We haven't had one on Twitter yet until Zicky Foos said, well, because of you guys, I won. Thank you guys so much. All their, of, all their views. This might be the start of me watching horse racing all season long. So that's, Maybe, that's what it's all about, isn't it, guys? Absolutely. Maybe he took our selections through the mat and bet everyone else. That's <laughs> no, how we got him to win. It doesn't sound like what he said. But okay. <laughs> well, I don't see how we could have possibly helped them. But well, we had ahead. the bonus races. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about the Derby. Yeah. I mean. So, and by the way, also let's keep in mind, I say this all the time, just as a repeater, it's not always about our picks. It's about the analysis of the race, the analysis of horses. So they might decide, hey, I like another horse and I didn't think of taking him until they said yeah, something that made sense go. to me. Right. And then that's why I took him. So, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, YouTube, here are some comments. Uh, Pat Mixstuff. <laughs> this is a good one to start with. Baffert is a crooked cheater. Okay, are we going to waste time with this? What does that mean? Baffert's a crooked cheater. Okay, yeah, I, good. I Next know. comment, please. Uh, Mitchell Ross. John, did you have a brother, David? That was my father. Your father, I David. I to him, yes. Uh, L.A. Boyko. Why I love this show, and this is going to get into uh, segueing into the Oaks. Uh, why I love the show. Into Champagne. Didn't see that coming. So he was talking, of course, about uh, the selection that Chad had in the Oaks as a long shot. But let's talk about the Oaks. Uh, what did you guys think about the performance by uh, Thorpedo Anna winning an easy, convincing Kentucky Oaks? She's a nice horse. She did what she was supposed to. Other horses didn't show up. The Chad Brown horse had a perfect trip at the top of the stretch. I thought she was going by. She didn't. Kenny McPeak deserves a lot of credit. Not easy to win the Oaks and the Derby on the same weekend. It hasn't been done in a long time. Uh, some trainer Jones many, many years ago did it. And Not some trainer, Ben Jones, the ben legend. Jones. 52. Yes. The, the, the trainer for Calumet Farm. But look, it's not just Kenny McPeak that, that, that did this as well. I mean, Brian Hernandez, and, and you start with the Oaks and then we'll get to the Derby. The ride he gave on Torpedo Anna in taking it to them from the start of the race, knowing how the track, look, the track played differently on Friday and Saturday. There was a lot of rain on Friday, you know, Saturday, the track dried out and it was the, on both days, really, it was the aggressiveness that Brian showed from the jump that really, really, you know, put him in the right position to win. 
he took it to it. Look, ways and means, the question was going to be if, if it was too far for her. You know, just just FYI, you know, was she did she need one more off the bench? And he, he, he took it to them every step of the way, led every step of the way, and, and was really a never-in-doubt winner. I, I thought, you know, the horse I like, Champagne, she – she, uh, she she gave us a, a cheap thrill there turning for home, but just wasn't good enough. Uh, just FYI, ran a, ran a bang-up race for second. I think she didn't embarrass herself. And Chad Brown's two fillies running third and fourth were were solid. But, I mean, there was no doubt about it. Torpedo Anna was the the best horse in the race on the day. Uh, she's clearly the, the leader of the division right now. And, you know, Kenny McPeak's going to have a decision to make about whether he wants to run on the acorn, which is now at a mile and an eighth instead of the mile distance that it was for years when it was at Belmont Park, but being at Saratoga now, it's a mile and an eighth. Or if he wants to try and run against the boys, going a mile and a quarter in the Belmont Stakes. So that'll be the decision to uh, to watch. It's fifty thousand dollars if he wants to nominate. Not that that's a, a problem after winning the two million dollar Kentucky Oaks, but uh, that'll be the decision that they have to make is is what route they want to go in. And and does it matter if Mystic Dan runs in the Belmont or not? You know, do they need a second jockey? And and really to me. The funny thing is, everyone sits there and they said that, well, you know, if if Mystic if if Mystic Dan the Derby winner and Torpedo Anna the the Oaks winner ran in the Belmont, then we would just need to you, you know, you would have to separate them because Brian rides both. I might think that Torpedo Anna might be a better horse than than Mystic Dan, and and I might ride I might ride Torpedo Anna over Mystic Dan. Wow. To be honest with you. By the way, the ride he gave uh, Mystic Dan was unbelievable. They had a. a if- it was all over Twitter where they had just him isolated. He banged off the rail three times turning. He he gave that horse just an unbelievable ride. And it starts from the, it starts from the start, right? Yes. He, he out hustled Louis Sayas and Dornock to the spot from the very beginning. Everyone well, thought Dornock had some trouble at the start, though. But but you're right. No, he ca- yeah. he caused the trouble to Dornock because he he was the more aggressive jockey. Everyone assumed that Dornock and Louis were going to be aggressive for Monslot. He broke a step slow, and in the Derby in a twenty-horse field, you, you can't afford to step right. slow. You know, and, and and it was funny because Brian Hernandez said after the fact, he said, "I went back and I was watching old Derbies." He said, "I with saw Calvin, Calvin Morrell. Morrell. That was I saw his idol. Him that bird." He said, "Ah, that was too far back. That uh, we can't do that." Then he goes, "I saw him ride Super Saver." He goes, "Ah, you know that might work for my horse," and he tried to emulate that trip. And he did it to, to absolute precision. Look, Brian, uh, his wife, Jamie, I've known them for a long time. Just just salt of the earth people. A beautiful family. Uh, couldn't be happier for, for them. And they deserve all the accolades. Look, he, he was the, the regular rider of a horse named Fort Lauren many, many moons ago that people might forget from Ian Wilkes. He won the Breeders' Cup at a young age. Yeah. Uh, at a time when he was thinking about just packing up and going back to the smaller circuit of, of Delta Downs and Louisiana Downs, Evangeline Downs. And that horse kind of kept him you know, on the mainstream, and he's been Kenny McPeak's right hand for the last couple of years, and they've had a lot of success together. And, look, Brian, Brian, I really felt like was in a zone. And and how he rode the derby, to me, was like how I ride rides every race. It just – it seemed like they were playing with house money. They had won the Oaks and everything else like that, and it just seemed like they're like, yeah, we, we got this. We got this. Why not? We have nothing to lose. And he just rode the horse with so much aggression and so much passion – and, and, and it came off in the race. And at the end of the day, look, there was some some controversy at the end that we can talk about briefly. But, um, you know, if that race is run in a 10 horse field, I'm not sure he wins it. He won it making the move he did at the start, making the move he made at the top of the stretch and having enough to hold on. And and that's that's the most important thing. Um, and so credit to, to, to all involved. Um, but if they run that race 10 times, I'm not sure he wins that race 10 times. All right, well, we're going to get By into the way, that. There was, there was some other horses in the race that had big trouble. Uh, the uh, the Cox horse, the horse that, that I liked, Donna Marie, totally wiped out at the start. So Yeah, what were there, like five the, of those horses that were wiped out? Yeah, they made a total sandwich. Donna yes. Marie finished eighth, but she, if you watch the race, it really was not a bad eighth. I'll yeah. tell you that much. So what's yeah, next for that's, Torpedo that's, Anna? Listen. Listen, that's the Derby. That's the whole yes, thing. Of course, of course. That's, that's the Derby. And that's why I've always said the Breeders' Cup is different than the Derby because the Derby, it's the horse that had the best trip, not necessarily the best horse in the race. Um, exactly. If we win the Derby next year, we're not going to apologize. <laughs> What's next for Torpedo Anna? I don't believe we're going to go to the Acorn or, or the Belmont Stakes. She, she's going to okay. run next on June 8th. 
It's just a matter of which which race he runs in. Okay, and, and by the way, have we had uh, what was the last time we had this trainer jockey trainer jockey Oaks Derby deal? Nineteen fifty two. What was that? Nineteen fifty two. Fifty two. Ben Jones. Ben Jones but, and Eddie. Well, oh, that was that Jones jockey. deal. Calvin Burrell won on Mind Your Bird and on Rachel Alexander the same weekend. That and was then when, when the Philly and the Colt ran together in the Preakness, he rode the Philly and he was right. Right, right, right. I'm right. just, I'm just saying. Look, it's You're interesting. Right, Jack, Jack, off listen. the numbers, off the numbers, hey. Torpedo in is better. By the nobody's, way, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's had the 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 guts to ask Brian Hernandez who he would ride, and I think he might give a diplomatic answer. I don't know that he would tell you uh, who he'd ride unless he, you know, he absolutely had to, but. Uh, to me, and this is a question I wish we could, you know, put it on the poll on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, you know, who you would ride. And I think most people think that they would ride Mystic Dan. But, I mean, Torvito Anna, both her races this year have been has been sensational. By the way, the ride he gave her in in, in the Apple Blossom at, uh, at Oakland was even races. more amazing. Yeah. He had the 12 post and ended up on the rail. That was one of the greatest rides you'll ever see. All right. All right. Uh, and we're going to still get into the derby here, but let's continue uh, with these uh, questions. And uh, James Lankop, new to horse racing. So this is for John. What does it mean when you say a horse ran a 10? A 10 is a figure. Every, a, a sheet number. We give we uh, give every horse a number for we, every we race. The, we need the rags and sheets. Right. We, we give the rags. Right. We give every horse the rags and sheets. Uh, uh, give every horse a number for every race they run in. The lower, the better. Not like the buyers. The buyers are the higher, the better. The Raggison figures are the lower, the better. And, so a 10 is a pretty good number. And, and if you, people wanted to find your find the numbers, how do they go about finding the numbers? How? They can call the office, go to the website, the sheets, the sheets.com, and buy, buy the sheets there. It's $40 a day yeah. for each racing card. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll put a link in the description for that as well, um, if I don't already have that there. So we'll have that there. And by the way, a blanket. By the way, you also have uh, what would you, what do you call them when you when you get on those calls, John? And you have those uh, seminars. Yeah, Zoom seminar every day for Nara. And, and that, is that is that just for the sheets? Yes, you have to buy the set of sheets for that day. To join uh, Zoom. There you go. So the Zoom is free. The sheets are the forty bucks. So. And, and 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 also, just if you ever hear me saying, "Well, the horse went 14, 13, 12, 11, whatever," that's exactly what we're referencing. So if right. we're saying it's going lower, then that's obviously a good thing in the numbers. Uh, by the way, also uh, Lenord Brazil. We've got two on Lenord Brazil. Where is that number you guys talk about on the form? The elevens and the nines. And I'm, it's not, you're talking about the numbers, the sheet numbers. You're not going to see them in the form. The form has buyer figures. The sheets are the sheet numbers. So the sheet numbers are totally different. The form costs you 10 bucks or 11 bucks, whatever it is, to buy the racing form. The sheets, it's $40 a track. If you get multiple tracks, they give you a discount. Okay. Uh, Jake315, all he said was awesome. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, that's not a bad thing. No. John C. Legorado. Chad, a great trainer. Love him. Me too. Next. Jeff Hockman. Great analysis as always. Good luck, gents. Th th those were the positives. Now, how about this one? Lorna Leto. Well, Chad thinks it's his show. What a bag of hot air. This should Whoa. be a, K a Kentucky Derby tutorial, not Chad pontificating tedious exasperating guess what no one forces you to watch the show if you don't like it you can turn it off i don't know that andy serling had another uh, another twitter handle a sodium a sodium yeah. <laughs> lorna leto thumbs down chad stealing the show hanging it's up the same, it's the same person look at, at the at the at the end at the end of the day if she'd like to come on or he'd like to come on the show we'd more than welcome their, their analysis but this show is not a tutorial. It's an analysis. That's we what should actually have a about. guest. We should have a slot for a guest on a week that's really slow. Yeah. But well, you got to start with Rockface. Rockface is the first. Rockface is solid, man. Rockface is one of the most solid listeners we have. But if the uh, the the we have Andy a lot of great listeners, to, uh, Rockface may be at us. the top. Yeah. And 
And then regarding the Derby, as we segue into that, and we'll just wrap up with our Derby talk, Mark Lewin, uh, Fierceness made the lead in a slow 47-2 in the Breeders' Cup, whereas the Breeders' Cup distaff went 46-1. Fierceness, a vulnerable favorite. So right on, Mark. Well, we said that before. He's never put two races together. That was the advantage of the sheets. Every time he ran a number, he reacted. That's and it. we said there was a chance that he had no excuse. He broke clean. He had no excuse. He may have hopped a little bit at the start. He came up zero. Yeah, how disappointing was that, Chad? Well, I mean, it's 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 ultra disappointing for for all all, all connections involved, and um, you know, I, I I don't think they could have scripted the start any better. I don't think he, you know, there look, there was some controversy. The the after we got off the air, after we did our our show, uh, pontificating um, our hot air analysis. Uh, there was some conversation about him having some sore heels um, the last couple of days going into the race. I, I'm not making excuses for him. I think, you know, Todd Pletcher certainly thought that he was good enough to, to run in the race, but he just, he, he, he had no excuse. Like Jonathan said, I mean, he, he, I mean, if, if you would, if you told, if you told their connections, that's where they were going to be at the start of the race after a quarter, after a half, I, I don't think, anybody would complain at all the only the only person that can possibly complain uh is Dwayne lucas because i'm not sure where just Steele was going uh, what was being, he doing on the lead it or just it, it, it seemed like he was trying to be the fullback for his father and just take out the competition but i, I don't know it, it by look, the way I, by the way there is a rider change joel rosario will be riding in the preakness just yeah that, uh, there you go so that's your answer for yeah. just Steele. Uh, yeah so much so much for the uh, the family backgrounds and everything together. It well, just didn't make any sense. It, it didn't really that moment is gone. Was, but but I, I think uh, other than that, I mean, like you said, you know, some of the horses were wiped out at the start of the race. But, um, you know, everything else kind of went according to plan. And Sierra Leone and Forever Young, um, they they battled at the top of the stretch. They battled to the wire. Um, they ended up noses noses behind at the end of the race. Look, at, at the end of the day now, this has become, you know, once is a, once is, is on you, twice is on me, three times is a problem, right? This is the third time that, that Sierra Leone has, has done this where he lugs in um, drastically bad. Now, he's a brilliant horse, uh, but this is something that he's done before. So just like Fierceness hasn't put good races together, uh, Sierra Leone continues to lug in at the end this of the race. This is a bad habit he has. But and, if anyone and, will figure it out, it'll probably be Chad Brown. So. What do you mean Tyler, lug in? He, so... He, Oh, he's drifting, okay. he's drifting inwards. It's like it's it's like a car that needs to be realigned. Yeah, that was definitely right. something that I was going to actually bring if up you're, because if, I, you're, if yeah. you're in a NASCAR event, you see a car kind of like that. You so take it for a pit stop. Yeah. So look, Tyler Gaffleyon and and everyone's going to talk about you know and and they want to hear about you know kind of the the inquiry that was and everything else. To me, if you watch the head-on replay, both horses, both horses, Forever Young and Sierra Leone, are going back and forth with each other, and. and at the end of the day, the picture that came out after the race was over, I don't, I still don't know exactly where that picture took place. It'd be nice if anybody interviewed Tyler Gaffleyone. They interviewed the Japanese jockey who said that he didn't have a problem with it. No, yep. nobody's interviewed Tyler Gaffleyone about what happened. I think he's just trying to correct the horse as he best was. he can, so the horse doesn't crash into somebody. His whip got stuck in the reins or the mane of of yeah. the other of the other wow. horse. Here's the amazing thing. Yes, it could have been equal blame on both jockeys but it's the job of the stewards to drop the flag this is a major race Every, the whole world is watching everybody that knows nothing saw there was contact the stewards have to make a foul claim just because you claim a, just because you put up an inquiry doesn't mean you're taking the horse down they had an obligation they dropped the ball the stewards absolutely dropped the ball they have to make a claim of foul there they have to well, that's not the only one, John. I mean, Brian. At the end of the day, it's a brilliant ride, but Brian Hernandez eliminated Joel Rosario at the top yeah. of the stretch. Yes, his boot hit the rail, but he also he also smacked Track Phantom twice. <laughs> I understand that Track Phantom was at the horse and wasn't going to win the race and wasn't going to cost him a placing, but he completely just sideswiped. Yeah, that's the whole world didn't see. Everybody Look, at the end of the day, here's the, here's the stretch run. You have to drop a flag there. Here, I, that's that's fine, 
and I think everything's reviewed, and it took a while for them to make it official. So for, 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 for the sake of the argument, let's say they should have just hung the flag while they were looking at it to make it official. They said they were waiting for the photo. I think they were just looking at the race. But, but to me, the, the thing is you want them to play. You don't want the whistle to always get involved. We've had so much controversy in these races the last, the last few years. And, and, and if the jockeys aren't claiming foul, and yes, they're looking at it, and they didn't they didn't drop the flag. We've we've seen this controversy two games in a row in the the Knicks Indiana Pacers series. They're calling a double dribble. The guy's dribbling the ball fine. They're calling a kickball. Look, mistakes happen all the time. It, at the end of the day, but, but Chad, this wasn't one bump. They were they were crashing. It looked like roller derby. <laughs> the the stewards had a responsibility for people that are even new to the game to drop the flag and call an inquiry. That's all. It's their job. It's their job. They waited an hour between races. What the hell's another 10 minutes? Oh, and, and not for anything. You had $10.2 million of handle bet on it from Japan that I'm sure had the horse place first and second. You had the, 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 the highest rating since 1989 on TV. I mean, we, we captured we captured the That's audience. The I'm still not thing. sure, That's I'm still the not sure why, unless the fact that Travis Kelsey was there and all the Swifties were, uh, were tuning in, but Look, it was it was great. It was a safe day, which is uh, more important than the finishes and everything else. Everybody yes. came home safe and sound. And, and and now, but here's the thing: let's not shoot ourselves in the foot, and let's try and carry this momentum forward. And unfortunately, after the Derby, the the, the it's it's the negative controversy. It's why wasn't there an inquiry onto this? The, they're but not going to be always going to have that. You're always we're only going to we're only gonna have a D Wayne Lucas horse in the Preakness. You know, yada yada yada. It's it's all again negative stories instead of the positive stories, and that's the problem that horse racing has. We have a giant PR problem, and we shoot ourselves in the foot constantly. When was the last time I can't remember? Three noses on the wire in the Derby. It was in a, an, um, an unbelievably exciting race. You know, but, even if you didn't win the bet, you say it was still a great race. But here's the here's the problem. Okay. Everybody now is so concerned about their percentages and everything else that we're going to go to the Preakness now. We're going to talk about the Preakness. The Preakness is next week. It's a week away. Maybe we have Mystic Dan. Maybe. He's not official yet. For sure, we don't have Sierra Leone. And for sure, we don't have Forever Young. Well, why would you run? If you're, you're a trainer, Chad, would you come back? If you didn't hit the board, if you don't run one, two, is there any point to run in the Preakness? Things have changed. Things have changed. Look. I, I think that they should have a point system in place with a big bonus structure at the end, forever has the most points at the end of the series. And then all of a sudden those three horses, if there's a, a $10 million prize for the horse that has the most points at the end of the series, it, it means something. I like it. But, but, but you're right. There's no point. It, nobody, you're, you're not a stallion. If you won the Preakness, I, nobody cares that Oxbow is a stallion. All you're right? going to do is fry your horse for the next six months. If you run him back on two weeks, but two weeks, I so think here, here's the thing. Back in the day, forever, they ran horses in two weeks. They, they run horses in between the bridge. Yes, no more, though. No more. That, that time is over. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, I, look, people are talking about, do you change the pregnancy? So you move the pregnancy back to, to, no. to, to no. bring these horses. That, then that changes, that changes what the Triple Crown is. Exactly. It's like moving the fences in because no one hit a home run in three games. So but, they've you, done, hey, but they've done that before in baseball. Yeah, but don't ruin horse racing. They do. They ruin every other sport. Uh, overall, though, uh, the effort from Sierra Leone, and I know Mystic Dan was third. I mean, started third. But just the effort from the two posts to get to that spot, and we talked about him as a closer and all the horses you're going to have to pass. Uh, and to lose by this much, uh, it, that was still very impressive by Sierra Leone. Yeah, well, how about T.O. Password, who had zero shot, the other Japanese horse, in career start number three, to finish fifth? I mean, if you were going to pick a horse to run last, that probably would have been your horse, no? The, I don't know. Florence Rue has finished 18th, 19th, and 20th last three years, so he's, he's doing a pretty good job. Himself. I know someone that actually bet fierceness to run last at 75 to 1. Well, th this was oh, huge. So, so, so. This was a huge race for ja for Japan. That's for sure. It certainly was. So, and especially the fact that they both started right next to each other in the stall. The whole race, the whole thing was just, I mean, again, forever young, uh, out racing. What, what you thought, Chad, I mean, just again, it, this oh, is. I, I have no problem with him as a racehorse. My problem is they scratched Forte last year for how he trained. And this horse trains exactly the same. And if anybody watched Mike Welsh's tweets, who I respect more uh, as much as anybody's 
watching morning workouts. He he had the same the same head scratching thing watching the horse train every day. The horse the horse does not look good training. He, you can't question how he did as a racehorse. He was undefeated going into the race. I didn't think he was going to get clearance to even run in the race. How about he he's like a nose away from being undefeated? Not only that. He was in Dubai or Maidan and then came across the world. This horse put in three big races in two months. That's unbelievable how good this horse is, I think. So 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 that's the reason that they so they 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 withdrew um Forte last year. Uh, for what reason? Because he didn't pass the vets. That's why right. you know And he didn't Chad pass the seven. vets for what reason? They said he wasn't they, physically sound. They thought something was wrong with him. They didn't like the way he was walking or jogging the morning of the race. That's why, and and they went crazy, Rapoli, and rightfully so. He had his own vets that passed him. There was no way they were not going to let fierceness run. I mean, he would have had a stroke if they would have scratched him. You know. Well, he replaced. He replaced last year. He brought the priest with him and he got the horse crash. This year, he had some kind of a a five foot plant with him. You know, I, I, I think he, he needs to he needs to find something else. I don't know. 